my best. I was also glad to have some displacement activity over the weekend. Uh, for those of you who followed the Six Nations tournament, and don't be misled by my name, I'm an Ireland supporter. I've got six in that day. Thank you. I need some serious displacement activity. But if I can start off with just some preliminary observations that family law is an oddity, it's a hybrid. You've already heard from my fellow speakers the sort of breadth and range of issues that we deal with. And the mixed audience here is testimony to that. And I could show you just one issue of family law for March, which would again, in purely legal terms, illustrate more than adequately the range of issues we deal with as lawyers. There's also the skill sets for lawyers, and I'm not ashamed to be setting out our school here. Uh, we need to understand hard law, but we need soft skills as well. We need empathy, but with proper boundaries. We need to know ourselves, both professionally, psychologically, and emotionally, and I find it also helps to have a profound sense of ridiculous. <laughs> Again, those who've already spoken have made a very clear ripple effects in terms of costs in the here and now and in the future, in terms of what happens in family law if we get it wrong. So there's a public good in the family law system. There's also the good of resolution for individuals. Those who cannot agree their disputes do need a civilised system for resolving those disputes. There is, of course, a good for the state in family law, principally in terms of child protection. The family justice system provides a system for making decisions, hard decisions, painful decisions, particularly about the future of children, those individuals who cannot or will not make those decisions. And in terms of the system itself, we all know the criticisms, we all know the problems. Winston Churchill, speaking in 1947, observed that democracy is the worst form of government, except for all those other forms that have been tried from time to time. Much the same can be said of the family justice system. And here we are in a mature, democratic system where our family law system is increasingly complex. I would like to just make a note of the comments that Lord Justice Wall made in a speech in March 2008. He spoke of the special skills which need to be demonstrated by social workers, advocates, experts and judges required to operate care proceedings in the family justice system. And again, much the same to be said of the system generally. So, with this edifice of complexity and difficulty, who should pay? Well, those who can afford to pay do, often all too enthusiastically. In a recent case decided by Ms. Mr. Justice Mundy, KSO, MJ and others, this was a divorce case in which there was a financial dispute. It was complicated by the involvement of in-laws, but suffice to say that there was a matrimonial pot of £770,990, so not short sure three quarters of a million. The costs amounted to, that on breath, £553,460. And Mr Justice Mungley took the time and the trouble to work out that that was 71.78% of the pot. He went on to quote Bleak House at the end of his book. <laughs> <laughs> it's in an appendix, which I won't read out in full, but suffice to say, and I quote, Mr. Kenge said Alan would appear in life to all in a moment. Excuse me, our time presses. Do I understand that the whole estate is found to have been absorbed in costs? Hmm, I believe so, returned Mr. Kenge. Mr. Bowles, what do you say? I believe so, said Mr. Bowles. And thus the suit lapses and melts away? Probably. A solid point. <laughs> Let me compare that with legal aid. A legal help divorce <coughs> leads to fees, solicitor's costs, start to finish £159. Care fixed fees for representing one child in the south of England, £2,761, start to finish. If you're representing one parent, £3,589. And certainly speaking for the 
law society, as I understand their view, these figures were calculated on what one might call dodgy data. Which <coughs> is, of course, right and proper to control costs, whether a case is legally aided or not. But what will be the effects in a climate of cost reduction and constant change, almost manners to change, on the existence and availability of skilled specialist family lawyers? Of course, some would say that we might be better off without lawyers. We all know the joke, what do you call ten lawyers at the bottom of an ocean? A start. <laughs> Of course, we face even further seismic shift 